Chris, what is our third main topic today? This one comes from Lawrence Mundale. Good morning, John. So I was pretty saddened a few weeks back when I heard that the test screenings for Indiana Jones 5 went really bad and no one liked it. Also that Phoebe Waller-Bridge takes up the iconic hat at the end and the test audiences hated that too. But the director, James Mangold, just said all of that is BS. What do you think of his comments and why do people make up stories like this? All right, Lawrence, thanks a lot for sending that in. Yeah, so you guys will remember that a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week or two, three weeks ago, I can't remember exactly how long, this story started going out and it was making the rounds that there had been a bunch of test screenings for Indiana Jones 5, whatever it's called, it was the Dial of Destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm just gonna call it Indy 5. Okay. That they, a bunch of test screens for happened for, with Indiana Jones 5 and they showed it to all these different test audiences with four different endings. And that all the audiences hated all of it. And that it ends with Phoebe, Phoebe, however Phoebe, you pronounce, Phoebe taking Indy's hat and putting on his hat at the end and all this kind of stuff. Well, and everybody just ate that up. Problem was, it was all a lie. But nobody ran with the fact that it got debunked. Uh, I talked to somebody at Disney, closely connected to the situation, who just straight up said, yeah, there haven't been any test screenings. It's not that the audiences didn't react badly to it. Hear me clearly. There were no test screenings. There just, there just weren't any. Um, period. End of story. There haven't been any. And But again, that didn't go around. There are still a lot of people out there who believe this, this lie that got floated out there. That there's, Now, listen, I don't know if this movie's going to be any good or not. Like, for all I know, this thing could be as great as The Last Crusade. It could be as crappy as Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I have no idea if the movie's good or not. I'm going to watch it, and we'll see how it is. But yeah, there were no test screens. They did not happen. They, did, they don't exist. Anyway, it kind of got brought up to director James Mangold, the incredible director who made Logan, who made a Ford v. Ferrari, which, oh my God, I love Ford v. Ferrari. Uh, it just His list is incredible. So it kind of got kind of brought up to him about, you know, oh, what do you, what do you think about all these people saying all this kind of stuff? And this is what James Mangold said. Uh, this comes to us from the folks uh, over at IndieWire, quoting James Mangold. He said this, one more time, no one is taking over or replacing Indy or donning his hat, nor is he being erased through some contrivance, Mangold wrote. And he never was. Not, all, not in any cut or script, but trolls will troll. That's how they get their clicks, he continued. And please, don't exhaust me pointing out how once in a while a troll is right. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut now and then. All one has to do is look at the set photos and interviews, and you get enough info to make wild guesses about a movie's plot. Mangold went on to explain that his main grievance isn't with the false information, but with cynical voices trying to monetize fans' outrage over something that isn't even happening. The difference between trolling assholes and everyone else is that they're trying to make money off of your feelings about other films and culture war politics, he wrote. They push controversial guesses as coming from quote-unquote sources to, to gin up clicks. Let it go. Uh, this is coming from Logan director James Mangold. All right. This, this is a lot, there's a lot of ground here to cover. Um, first of all, I like the fact that he just comes out and straight up debunks a bunch of the specific things that were being said. about. Again, number one, there were no test screens. Number one, she doesn't don Indy's hat and whatever, all this kind of nonsense. There weren't four different endings shot to this. There never was, never has been, never will be. So there's that. But he does bring up something very interesting, something that I kind of touched on a little while ago. The, the proliferation of the hate sites has been exponential because people have found out that putting out blind, mindless hate content gets a lot of clicks it does and so now you have this entire sub industry of hundreds of podcasts and youtube channels and and blogs and stuff like hundreds of them that all they do when you go to their blogs or youtube channels whatever and you look down all the blog posts or all the youtube videos every single one is some kind of hate video 
you'd never guess or be able to tell. What is it these people love? You'd never be able to guess it. And the funny thing is, is you start reading a lot of these blogs and stuff like that. You start realizing, I don't even think half these people believe this. What you've got is an entire sub-industry of shills. They shill for hate, click, for hate clicks. They will even say things they don't even think or even believe as long as it'll push the anger button in people and drum up culture war politics. They will literally sell their mothers to get some of those hate clicks to the point that they don't even care. They'll just make shit up and put it out. Now, listen, this is coming from a guy that, you know, I'm not afraid to tell you I hated Rise of Skywalker. I'm not afraid to tell you I hated Obi-Wan. I'm not afraid to tell you I didn't like Book of Boba Fett and I'm not all that thrilled with this, that, or the other thing. I'm not afraid to tell you that. But, but again, at the same time, you, you get it. I've never heard a filmmaker, though, articulate it so perfectly as James Mangold just did. But I get it. Listen, my favorite video that I have on my YouTube channel is a video I did a number of years ago where I was the keynote speaker at this big leadership conference. And the name of the video is Why Movies Matter. And it's me giving this eight-minute speech about why I think movies matter, why I think they're important, why I think movies are wonderful and, and something that can unite the world and bring people of different ethnic backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, sexual orientation backgrounds, whatever, can bring people together. You can get people from all over the world who are totally different from each other, sit them down at the table and say, okay, topic, Lord of the Rings. And these people can all find common ground and talk and then have this great conversation. Movies matter. But here's the thing. That video of mine, I think it's got like 17,000 views. 17,000 views. Whereas you go to some random angry rant video I have, they'll have 50, 60, 70, 80,000 views, right? So I get it. I do. It's like Yoda, Yoda always said, like the dark side is not stronger. No, but it's easier. It's more seductive. I mean, it, it gets there. So, I mean, I totally get what he's getting for. The, the way to combat this, though, is not to get people who are profiteering and making money off of hate rage. You're never going to change that. Never going to change that. Because again, I get the appeal. I do. So you're never going to change that. The way you combat stuff like that is by better educating the movie going audience. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key. I think that's one of the things that James Mangold is trying to point out. It's like, look, these people are just making shit up with nothing to base it on. And other people are just eating it up. But it is anyway. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Manscaped. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topic. Tell your in-laws about your new cutting-edge ball trimmer and gift yourself or the man in your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Trim up your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and use the code CAMPIA for free shipping and 20% off. And this year I am so thankful for Manscaped because like most of you guys, I used to use Neanderthalic Dark Age methods to trim my balls. Not anymore thanks to Manscaped. It's time for all of us to give thanks to Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 or as I like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Inside, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. The heart of the package, their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code CAMPIA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the promo code CAMPIA. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Chris, you're seeing James Mangold. He's clearly getting really fed up with this. Yeah, um, really so. But I don't know, what do you make from his comments? I mean, I think he nailed it on the head. You know, when, when I first started working for you in our first interviews, one of the things we talked about was why would I want to come here? And I'm, I'm a very happy person. And I hated that a lot of times I was baited into doing videos that would have a very negative skew on them that I didn't agree with, or that my videos would be titled with something clickbaity. And a lot of people then don't watch those videos. They look at the title and go, oh, well, now this is a real thing. And now we have to talk about it. And you see it in the comments too of like, this is all bullshit. 
and they'll talk about things that you address in a video. It's wild. Why don't you guys watch the videos for these things? It's crazy to me. But I, I think that so many of these sites, like you were saying, just do get views for when you talk about how something is so terrible. And obviously, you know, they're there's merit to talking about something objectively. You know, if, if you're somebody who just loves everything, that's fine, but you're not doing honest reviews probably then, right? But if you are just dogging on stuff and stirring up rumors, you're not helping either. You know, I think that we wanna try to be, as we can, as objective as possible when talking about what's going down with the movie, especially before it's even in cinemas. You know, you can only report on the facts. These people are in it. This is the storyline we know. These are the things that production has told us. Until audiences actually see a movie, you can't talk about how an audience is going to react to it, you know? Yeah, I, and, and again, see, here's the whole thing about it, is that you are obviously not going to like things. There are things you don't like. Again, I've, I've just run down this big, long laundry list of just some big, high-profile stuff that I've not been all that thrilled with, whether it's Obi-Wan, uh, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are things you're not going to like, but when you go to a blog or a podcast feed or a website or a YouTube channel, whatever. And like literally nine out of every 10 things is about this sucks. And this sucks. And here's why this sucks. And this is angry. And oh, be mad. And oh, be rage, rage, rage. Here's the funny thing. These BS rumors, like stuff like, oh, there were five test screenings and the audience hated it. Every time yeah. it'll come from one of those places. It never comes from variety. It never comes from the rap, never comes from coming soon. It never comes. I mean, I don't like these guys, but they, hey, they, they, it never comes from Collider. They never comes from, you know, CBR. It never comes from Screen Rant. It always comes from one of those sites. Whenever you see one of these big blow up, big, like BS rumor things going around. Like I remember too, like when Captain Marvel was coming out and it like shattered all kinds of box office records, had a huge opening weekend. Do you guys remember this? There was that story that started going around. It was like... Well, I went to see Captain Marvel opening weekend and there was a photo, took a photo of an empty yeah. theater and ain't, nobody was here. So Disney is making, buying out seats and they're making up things. And that story spread like wired wildfire. Now, Dan Merle did a great dive into that, finding out, oh yeah, the source of that alleged photo came from this one guy in this one social media account that has been completely bagging on the Captain Marvel months before the thing ever came out. Number one, you're never gonna convince me that guy bought a ticket to go see Captain Marvel opening weekend and that that's the guy that just so happened to come across the picture of the empty theater, right? But that's the thing. These stories always come from one of those places, which should, to an educated audience, should tell you a lot of stuff. Again, that's not to say that like one of those blogs or podcast feeds or whatever are, don't can't have some valid criticism and some valid opinions and all that kind of stuff. That's great. Nothing wrong with that. But yeah, when, when you start to see directors like James Mangold, like Oscar level directors like James Mangold, just starting to be completely fed up with it. I don't know. It says I mean, a lot. When you, when you're dealing with something, first of all, that is big juicy IP that people have a lot of feelings about going into it. And you're also spending so much of your time and effort and blood, sweat and tears on a project to have people just dog on it before it comes out with completely unwarranted things, right? Cause there, if I hear a plot point that I'm like, oh, that does not sound good. Or, oh, that kind of trailer looked a little iffy. Those are things based in merit, right? But when people just pull things out of their ass, that has to be so friggin' frustrating. Yeah, especially then once it gets proliferated and gets the link shared exactly. and it, all of a sudden it becomes a story when it was just something. So listen, and I get it. I, I don't know again if Indiana Jones 5 is gonna be good or not. I don't know. I'm excited for it, sure. But I was super excited for The Rise of Skywalker. Woo, I was excited for that movie. I went to the world premiere. I was there with the stars and all that. I was super excited about it. And I came walking out. I'm like, uh, yeah, this ain't it, guys. This ain't it. So I get it. You can be just one. Maybe Indy 5 will suck. I'll be the first one to say if it is, if it is. But we got to start shooting down the BS stuff that comes out about all of these movies in advance. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you make of James Mangold's comments here? I think he's actually spot on. I I think no other filmmakers articulated as well as he just did. I don't know. How do you guys feel about it? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there.